Hello and welcome to this edition of VOI Weekly on Channels Television. I'm Ini John Mekwa. Well, the Bank of Industries' quest to empower Nigerians in various sectors of the economy has been extended to the Graduate Entrepreneurship Fund scheme. The first youth program was launched in October 2015 and other micro-entrepreneurs such as furniture and shoemakers, bakers, tailors, among others, have benefited from this scheme. Now, since the disbursement of these loans, many of such entrepreneurs have taken their businesses to greater height as they continue to access funds from the Bank of Industry. Two of such beneficiaries would be featured on this episode of the program. You're welcome. Channel's television team visited Dotto Fasonier's Frames Wear Concept, a consulting business outfit involved in the production and distribution of specialized wares. This is the story of an entrepreneur who is making his mark in the industry. Dotto Benson Fasonier, a chemist who graduated from the University of Joss, runs Frames Wear Concept a business outfit involved in the production and distribution of specialized wares such as laboratory coats, theater gowns, uniforms, sports wares, and special orders unique to the medical industry. The quest for knowledge and seeking solution to financial constraints as an environmentalist brought him in contact with the Bank of Industry, where a relationship was established leading to the bank's intervention to boost Frames Wear's concept. I started a, an organization called Center for Earthworks, an organization passionate about securing the earth. Um, so the question was actually, so how do you sustain yourself while you do your activism? Well, gradually I had to sit with my team and then ask, a personal question. The personal question was simple. So if there is no resources going, are you sure you are going to be able to pursue your passion? So somehow, as an adventurer, uh, and the way I was brought up, my parents always uh, tell me the need to actually follow your dreams and the need to continue with dedication and passion and focus. So I went into this as an adventure to actually find a little means of income. And before you know it, um, the little question that was raised, how do you raise money, became a very wonderful adventure. We started as an, uh, as an outfit where we make lab coats. Um, and theater outfits just for professionals. And when we started, it was just an idea. Um, with time, I was able to get a machine, an industrial machine, at least two. Then um, we started putting out our products. And once people saw the products, they saw the uniqueness. And we continually got referrals from our clients. Following the bank's intervention, the business experienced some growth as new machineries were acquired and more hands hired to meet the demands of customers. The business is attracting international attention after some medical personnel came in contact with the company's medical scrub produced for the University of Just Teaching Hospital and was eventually taken to India. You basically, um I spent some good time on the internet and I listened to radio and searched for opportunities online. So I came across the uh, intervention called the Youth Entrepreneurship Support Program, ESP, of this current administration. So I applied and uh, somehow I was shortlisted and uh, we went for the interview and we were taught about the process of how to apply bringing in your proposals and doing your documentation right. So I had to actually fully register my business as it is. So I registered it with a name called Frames Wears. I was able to secure uh, the sum of 2.2 million naira, um, majorly for equipment purchase and then part of it as 
working capital. So majorly 1.1 was for the purchase of equipment and the remaining was for working capital. Basically, the, um, I was given six months monitoring period and I, um, the duration for the loan is three years and um, the interest rate is actually um, 9%. One of the key impacts is me getting access to acquire equipment. In this adventure, as I call it earlier, I discovered one key thing that getting equipment and the right equipment is actually very, very important for success. We started, just like I said, as uh, a company that produced only lab coats and theater outfits for doctors. Then when we actually explore the market, we notice that okay, there is actually a very wide market in Nigeria for uniforms, for other forms of wears like t-shirts, academic gowns, sportwears, and many others. So um, having access to the BOI loan helped me to acquire equipment which could actually assist us in making, uh, producing t-shirts. So we started the, our t-shirt line. Then we also went into pro the production of academic gowns, into the production of uniforms, into the production of hoodies, jackets, um, just name it, any uh, uniform. It's actually in our archive. Currently we are working towards uh, the production of uh, bags and other um, important utilities. My key advice would be that remain focused. Whatever you want to do, you must be focused, you must be disciplined, you must know what you want to achieve, um, and then try and study the market, as well as um, go through the right channels to get the important information. One of the key things I did it was uh, we are not the first set, so I had to meet some of our colleagues uh, and ask them, okay, so how do you go about applying for the loan? So I was given guidance and then the things to avoid the pitfalls. And then I was able to actually put in my proposal right. And then I approached uh, the bank. And of course, I was given the opportunity to acquire the loan. I think the future of um, the fashion industry is a very huge gold mine that is left untapped uh, and I believe a lot of people are keen into it right now. It is an opportunity for young people to actually engage other people to creatively design and construct made in Nigeria garments and showcase it to the world. Okay, my vision of course is just like I mentioned earlier, to have at least our product in each household across the country and even beyond Africa and to the world. And uh, we intend to do so through our consistency, through our unique uh, products. So our major uh, slogan is simply precision in style. That's our slogan for Frames West, precision in style. This kind of adventure is not for the faint-hearted. So if you want to do this, you have to burn bridge. One of the key portraits at home in my house is that it's like a letter. It says, son, I need you to build a bridge. Here are all the tools you need. See you soon. Love that. And it only contains a hammer and three nails. And you know it's like an impossible task to build a bridge without all the other uh, tools you need. So, is left for you to actually create an idea and pursue it with the whole of your heart. And of course, um, things will fall into place. As it is, we, I started with just a staff. Um, our staff strength is now 14 and sometimes at peak period we have up to 25 staff working in this factory. We started just with an idea and now we are at this stage and we believe the future is bright. Frame's vision is to meet the growing demand of providing special wares for all who need them, and the Bank of Industry is no doubt helping to drive this vision.
And next is a feature on Godwin O'Malley, a graduate of Library and Information from the same University of Jaws. He ventured into bakery business and today his story collides with that of the Bank of Industry. Sunrise Bakery, located in the University of Joss, is a subsidiary of Oma Global Company that was established in 2018 to produce bakery products ranging from bread, donuts, meat pies, popcorn and other confectionery for students, staff and other members of the university. Equipped with some background knowledge and skills acquired from his parents, Mr. O'Malley, a graduate of Library and Information Science from the University of Joss, ventured into the bakery business to solve the university environment's desire and yearning for hygienic and affordable bakery products. I studied Library and Information Science in the prestigious University of Joss. I finished in 2017 and uh, I served in Adwekiti. So um, upon completion of my NYC, I returned back to Joss, then I started Sunrise Bakery. My mom is a baker, and uh, right from when I was growing, I used to pick interest in, in our activities, and uh, even before I came to the university, I already knew how to bake cake and other small, small shops and uh, things like samosa and uh, donuts before I even came to the university. Came to the university, yes. Well, bakery business is uh, a very interesting one. It's um, a business full of uh, activity once you, you, you are dedicated and committed because it works with a lot of timing. Actually, I used to tell people that baking is a science because most of the things that we do is uh, we measure them just as the same way scientists measure their addition before they go into any formulation. Because bread that you have the same taste every day, you begin to wonder, why is it the same? Even if you cook at home, there is a day that something will happen. But that is why I always tell people that baking is a science. Because we put into consideration a lot of uh, uh, measurements into place before we bake. And business-wise, uh, when we started, we were doing very great. Uh, even now, we are still doing well, but well, just the constant uh, variation in inflation of prices of uh, raw materials it has is weighing down on uh, many bakeries, not mine alone, because I'm not the only one. Uh, like the cost of um, uh, sugar when I started was 13,500, but right now it's 20,000. Mm -hmm. So flour when I started was 10,000, but right now it's 15,000. So mm -hmm. when you look at this plus or minus, you know that a lot of uh, business in uh, food processing right now, they are not having it easy, but based on demand, we still try to meet up with our targets. Okay. Right now, currently, including a driver, we, we are eight, and um, we have varieties of uh, products. On the bread, we have the big loaf. That is, uh, we have sunrise big loaf. We also have the medium loaf. Then we have the smaller loaf, which is more of like student friendly because it moves faster than the other, other ones. Then, well, we also produce a uh, meat pie. As you can see behind me, she's even currently working on a uh, meat pie. We make donuts, then uh, we do cupcakes, then we do shawarma, then uh, we also sell ice cream, then we sell soft drinks also here. Then based on demand also, students so work in here to use the pure sometimes to get uh, cash. So it's also a way of uh, generating extra income. He speaks on his contact with the Bank of Industry during his orientation camp at the National Youth Service Corps when officials of the bank came for an advocacy visit. He seized the opportunity to apply for the intervention scheme for the food production section, which turned the fortune of his business around. During camp, they came, they, they spoke to us that there's going to be an opportunity and uh, while we were serving four months into service, the application portal was open. Uh, I think during my time, over 
seven to ten thousand people applying and BOI through the application submitted they were able to streamline the number to one thousand all across Nigeria and uh, when we applied they send us message that they will be in touch then I think two weeks later they sent us uh, another message of our training because BOI trained us on um, entrepreneurship for four days. It held in six locations all across Nigeria. So I was part of the Southwest uh, cohort and uh, we gathered at the orient NYC orientation camp in Oshun State. So even during our stay there, we spent four days. Uh, our trainers came from Lagos. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Abimbola Osushuku was the lead trainer and uh, she trained us very well and were divided into two classes. In my own class A, I emerged the best participant for the whole of Southwest during my time. Then after the training, we were now asked to send in our business plan for funding. Then BOI also encouraged us to also register our business with a Corporate Affairs Commission, which we did and um, it took a while, but I think they are very committed people because they take their time, they investigate everything from A to Z. So it took a longer time. I think we waited for almost a year before, after service, uh, like seven months after service, before we, we got the intervention that we got from the Bank of Industry. Yes, I think uh, majorly the, the cash is uh, 1.9 million. And uh, BOI, as you know them, they don't give you money the finance equipment and that is why they are called bank of industry so except you apply for working capital but ours was restricted between two million so uh, mine we got um, 1.9 million which was a, uh, they finance our oven mixer and the uh, work table and the bread rack is four uh, items they finance then they were able to also help with uh, my rent for three months for three years, sorry. Uh, the moratorium was uh, six months. Then uh, for Jeff, that is Graduate Entrepreneurship Fund, which I fall under, there is no interest rate. Okay. It has been fantastic. I think uh, I will commend uh, BOI staff. They are very wonderful people. Uh, because when, during a time of uh, waiting, my relation officer then, uh, Mr. Ayatuddin Umar, is, he, we were under, formerly under Baoshi before the Plateau State Office uh, opened. Now my relation officer is uh, Fatima uh, Shakarao. So I think they are wonderful people. They, they are people that uh, they, they care to know about your pain first, even before their own services. So they, they always check on us and uh, they always come around to know how things are affairing. So post BOI, things are, are far, far better than where it used to be. For me, I believe in human capacity. Like my staff, most of them, they don't know anything about bakery before we started. But now, I can tell you that almost all know how to bake, mold. Once the recipe is available, they can work. As young as they are, they are undergraduates here. Yeah? So my goal is that Within the next one or two years, we should be able to establish in other locations. Apart from establishing another location within JOS, also want to capture Gombe, Baoshi, Benue, and Kogi State in the next five years. That is our target. And my plan is that each of my staff that is here will be the one to start any of the locations that will gear up. So we are building them for the future. Uh, just say, for example, the one in 100 or 200 level, upon completion of uh, the university education, and we send him to Benue to start as a branch manager there. I think for a start, it's something that uh, he or she may have uh, interest in. Even later on, he or she may develop interest and have their own uh, bakery also, which is allowed, but he will complete his experience while on the field on his own then with, with few supervision. That is the goal. One of the challenge that I faced while I was here is that I don't have access to good bread. And I, to good bread, 
good baked foods. So, and I love bakery products. So, that was even what gave me the idea to even come back and put it inside University of Georgia so that people will not have to go through what I faced through when I was here. Uh, bakery business is capital intensive. Like uh, when we started, we, we started with roughly 2 million, but now we are worth over 10 million. So what I always tell people is that uh, when one is flying and they put parachute on the plane for you, the parachute will not come out until you start flying. So I always tell people, you have it rough, but just start. When you start, it's when you have problem that you look for solution. But when you don't start, you will not have problem. So but I always encourage anybody that wants to go in, into any form of business, do your research well. When you are confident and you are sure, you can break even. You can go ahead and start. In the process of the starting, help will come. We have received help from people. So we cannot say that uh, uh, in, the uh, in the beginning you have it all figured out. No. The person that even trained me has worked in bakery for over 30 something years. If it, were not, if it were not to be because I started, I wouldn't have met him. So, a lot of things will be easier when you start. Do your research well. Once you know your, your research is okay, your market analysis is okay, and you are confident of this business, I would advise you to start. In the process, you will see maybe one of your uncle that you have been asking for something will say that you are now serious. He will give you something. Or somebody that has been watching you will say, ah, come. Let me help you. Even if it's a prayer, it's also help. The thing is, um, the, I tell people that you can be civilized even without going to school. But the essence of going to school is to get wider knowledge on how to do things. It's application. It's a daily uh, application of what we all do daily. So the education we got is that, okay, we can't do things in the conventional way people are doing it. We have to look for a way that it will help us health-wise. Because if I'm using smoke, before I turn 65, maybe I'll start, or 50, I'll start using glasses. Or It has a lot of health hazard. So when I wanted to start, I researched into modern equipment. And I come across uh, a lot of them. In fact, in developed countries, they don't even use anything, anything that has to do with fire or charcoal. It's purely gas or electric. So like our own oven is gas uh, oven, gas powered, then electri electronically controlled. So it's modern. Even our mixer, you just mix your ingredient, add water and add butter and you sit down. When it's done, you remove it, you cut. So uh, the level of education we acquire with our exposure, because when I was in AKT, I was opportune to visit Captain Cook. It's a popular bread in uh, the Southwest. So, and uh, I happen to also go inside and see their level of uh, equipment because the bread is big there, but you will not know that something is happening. Like if we are walking here, you will not know that something is happening. So it helped and I now discovered that even in Nigeria they sell this equipment. When I went online, I saw that uh, there is an Apotex food equipment in Lagos. Then we contacted them, then through BOI we were able to get the equipment down to Georgia. In addition to meeting the demands of the university population, Sunshine Bakery also extends its market to the people in just north and just south local government areas of Plateau State, with a vision to establish bakeries across higher institutions around the country. With the intervention of the bank, the business has enjoyed growth based on its capacity to meet the demands of its customers, with daily supplies of products to over 65 stores in Jos and Bukuru Metropolis, as well as the capability to compete favorably with others in the industry. So over the years, the Bank of Industry has continued to provide interventions for various industries to thrive. And there's absolutely more where that came from. You can be a part of it. The interventions have obviously provided tremendous positive impacts on the lives of beneficiaries and the public. Many also are very optimistic that the intervention would make meaningful contribution to the nation's socioeconomic development. Are you an entrepreneur? Do you intend to be one? Do you know anyone? 
come and be part of the story. That's it on this episode of the program. Do remember to reach out to Bank of Industry on their social media platforms or visit any of their offices. Until next time on the program, I'm Ini John Mekwa.